I've had the privilege of working with Asiko for many years. They've helped to uh, devise quite a few interesting instruments and uh, mostly for lamellar surgery, also a bit for refractive and for smile. But uh, I think the instruments that we have have transformed how we perform DAUC and DSEC. And over the years, uh, I'd be very grateful for Asiko helping us to make some of the very nice instruments. Um, just check, does everybody here do DSEC? DSEC? No? Not everybody? Okay, not yet. Anybody doing DMEC? Okay, so um, my talk today is to focus mostly on DMEC but also on DSEC uh, and really how to perform DMEC when you become a competent DSEC surgeon, how to then change to doing DMEC, okay? Um, these are my financial disclosures. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, I get nothing from Asiko here. Asiko is not there. So all my, I have no financial gain, okay? <laughs> okay, so for those who are aware of the uh, EBAA report, the latest report, you'll see that DSEC, 50% of all transplants in the US. And you can see on the top right here that although it's 50%, it's not increasing. Okay, your PK is on the left here. And if you look at DMEC, this is DMEC on a rise. But if you look at the actual percentage, these are in hundreds, these are in thousands. So really, we're talking about 6% of surgery is DMEC. Now, maybe it's gone up to about 8% now, I'm not sure, but it's still a minority, okay? In Singapore, we started lamella surgery way back when we started the program back in 1991. In grey here are all PKs. These are the number of transplants each year. And you'll see that we started off with doing very little anterior lamellar keratoplasty. But really it was around 2000 when we did a lot more in green. And then we started our uh, DSEC program in 2005-2006. Uh, uh, light blue here, we're beginning to do some DMEC. So DSEC is still our most common operation now, 56%. That was last year. DAUC takes up about 27%. PK is only relegated to 15%. These are the full thickness, very severe cases where you can't do a DALC or a DSEC. And DMEC last year was 2%. Now it's a bit higher, okay? But basically what we're really looking at is the fact that 85% of our transplants at the Singapore National Eye Centre are now lamella. And I think this is the trend. This is our history of adopting DSEC. So we look at the cell loss. And over the years, we've been charting our cell loss, endothelial counts, at one year. These are all one-year figures. And you'll see that we started off with PK. Our one-year endothelial cell loss in our PKIs is 40%. In 2006, we started DSEC using the taco folding technique that was taught originally by uh, Garrett Mellers, uh, Frank Price, and Mark Terry. And it's still a very common way of inserting the donor. We have Asian eyes, and our Asian eyes with high vitreous pressure, we were getting much higher cell loss. So our cell loss rates were 60% at one year, which was unacceptable. We then changed to the, uh, using an anterior chamber eyewall sheet glide to pull through the donor, and we used this for a while, but straight away you see that we cut the cell loss down to about 30%. That was in 2007. And then we decided to invent a dedicated donor inserter, and that's the endoglide, which is made by Network Medical, and the cell loss dropped down dramatically to about 15%. So in the last 10 years, we have been able to basically halve our endothelial cell loss from PK to DSEC, and then we get better and better. Now comes DMEC. The learning curve, I will show you can be as low as 28%, can be as high as 59%. So this is the challenge of DMEC. It's more difficult to do and you're gonna get more endothelial cell loss. Okay, so you come back, they're not far off, PK now. So we have to have something better. Which one do you do, DSEC or DMEC? So here's one of my patients. The right eye had a DSEC, he gets 6.9 or 20-30 vision. On the left, he gets 6.6 vision with a DMEC. If you ask him, He's 49 years old, he much prefers, he has Fuchs dystrophy, 
He much prefers the left eye because he gets 6-6 six, six vision. However, he knows that his cell loss in the DMAC eye, he's only had 1,400 cells compared to his DSEC eye, which has got double, 2,700. So which does he prefer? He's not sure. Okay, so this is the penalty. If you look at endothelial cell loss, this we published some time ago, looking at all the various DSEC insertion techniques over the first year. This is percentage endothelial cell loss on the uh, y-axis. And you'll see that it ranges all the way from 60% down to about 12 to 15%. And these are all the uh, different inserters, taco folding technique, the Busin glide. Endoglide, the endoglide is here in green, so endoglide has got the lowest cell loss. How does this compare to PK? I told you that our one-year survival in the Singapore corneal transplant study for PK is 40%, so it's here. So our endoglide is much better. But if you look at the corneal donor study cell loss at one year, this is the multi-center study in the US, they only have 22.8% cell loss. So even today, DSEC may not be as good as PK. What about DMEC? Well, the main people who've been doing DMEC are Garrett Mellis, Frank Price, Mark Terry. They've done the, 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 the longest now, reaching five years. And their results are there. So that is the same as TACO with DSEC, about 30 to 40% cell loss. So unfortunately, we're back to this sort of level. We've got to bring it down to this sort of level. You can see Mellis, 30, 34%, Price, 36%, Cruz, 39% at six months. Okay? This is five-year follow-up of endothelial cell density. This is Price's, uh, Frank Price, five-year DSEC study, where you see an initial drop, and then it stabilizes to about 55% at five years. Okay? This is where we are now with the endoglide. We have now, there are now nine published studies, and the overall cell loss is much better. This is with DSEC endoglide, probably the best results. Where does DMEC come in? It's still there, okay? So it has to get a bit better. What about the Australian Chronograph Registry? Some of you will have read this paper, which was quite shocking, because Australian Chronograph Registry has 22,000 graphs. They track everything in Australia, longest database, and they showed that lamella surgery is worse in their hands. So both EK and DALC have poorer graph survival. Here is PK, kaplan mass survival for Fuchs. Here is EK. It's far worse. Here is PK, and here is DALC, mostly keratoconus. You see DALC is worse. And even when they split up DSEC versus D DSEK, DSAEK, and DMEC, DMEC does the worst. So this demonstrates a real-world situation where we have a lot of surgeons trying to adopt new techniques and the results, initially at least, are not as good. This is the learning curve. So this is the problem with lamellar surgery, both with DALC and with DSEC and DMEC. You've got to get the technique right and then you start to get better results than PK. This, though, I'm, the next slide I'm going to show you is the main problem with DMEC. This is the surgery. You've probably seen all of this from Frank Price, Mark Terry, what sort of surgery is this? You've got to unscroll it, you've got to tap it, you can't touch it. Sometimes it takes five minutes, sometimes it takes one hour. And this is, Frank Price says, this is the fun part of surgery. Mark Terry calls this Decimate's Dance. The concept from Mellis is supreme. Very nice where you can see that the idea is good, but it's caveman surgery. What instruments do we have? We have air, BSS, and a BSS cannula. That's it. Okay, so that's all you're using there. Look at that. Go on and on and on. These are good videos, by the way. Will it, you think everyone, all corneal surgeons can do this? I'm not sure. There has to be a better way. Okay, this is just too primitive. We know there is a higher complication rate with DMEC. The graph failure can be as high as 20% higher endothelial cell loss, as high as 40%. Donor dislocation, where you have to rebubble, could be as high as 60%. What's more important, the extra line of visual acuity or the extra thousand endothelial cells that you've lost with DMEC? 
There is a major advantage. We now think that DMEC has very low rejection risks. PK rejection is about 15%. DSEC, 2 to 4%. DMEC, 1%. So there is a huge advantage in DMEC. And that's why with this sort of surgery, the adoption rate is only 6%, even in the US. <clears throat> okay, so this is the current technique. This is donor stripping, so there are two problems. One is how to prepare the donor, and then secondly, how to insert it into the eye. This is the standard scuba technique from Frank Price. I mean, almost everybody is doing a variation of this technique. You can see you run the spatula around, you get little tags, you've got to free it, and then you peel. Now, the early studies showed that the wastage rate due to tearing could be anywhere from 5% to 18%. Okay, and here you are, this is a Sinsky, a small little hook. And now you peel. This is where you can tear. We now know that if the donor is 40 years or less, if the donor is diabetic, the chance of tearing is very high. And so, today, people do dissect using donors which are less than 40 years old, and they try to avoid diabetics, okay, because of the tearing. And if you tear, you may not be able to use this tissue. So, again, it's very primitive. You peel. You go around and you peel. So you go on and on. Having said that, I think if eye banks do it, they'll get better at it. So now the wastage rate is less. But if you do this in your OR and you tear it, you cancel the whole operation, okay? So that goes on and on. Now, if you're doing this technique, which is still good, you notice he now has a different instrument. That was clear, that's the star chamber, and just now was a donor punch. So Asiko have helped to develop a very nice uh, donor, uh, donor punch block, which I will show you. That's the one, it's still prototype stage, it's transparent. This is a punch block and Stripper all combined. So you can see it's transparent. This is using just the light microscope. And you can see it's just like a star chamber. You can see very well, you can peel. So if you like this technique, this is a nice block. Will it be disposable? Yeah, so it'll be disposable, uh, single use. And you can see you can peel it very nicely. You can see very good visualization. So you don't have to change to a punch block and the star chamber. So this is the scuba technique. And you can see the peeling technique. So this will be, uh, this is the Meta, my colleague, George Meta and, and I helped to design this and Asiko has made this prototype for us. So I think this will make uh, the donor peeling much better because you can have very good visualization. Okay, so I don't know when this will be available, hopefully it will be available soon. ASCRS, okay, so if you go to ASCRS, we should have this ready. Okay, so that's one innovation. So this is a paper which just shows that diabetic corneas, 15% failure rate in tearing. Non-diabetic, 2%. So nine times higher risk. So again, we are limited. This is because of tears when you peel. All right, that's the problem. Frank Price shows the probability of tissue loss is 10 times higher in diabetics. If you go and ask your eye bank, how many patients who die and you get the corneas, what's the percentage of diabetes? it can be 10 to 20% in the eye banking population, okay? These are the tears. This is by uh, Friedrich Cruz Group to show that there are these peg-like interdigitations, decimase onto basement membrane, and that's why it tears. It tears at these points. So how do we... Here's another one where you see the horseshoe tears being described by Price's group, okay? 60% chance that if one tears, the mate will tear as well. So these are all the problems because you are peeling. So why don't we don't peel? So this is the other innovation we've demonstrated. This is a, a DMEX stripper, which is now available. It's been available for some time. I call it the DMEX stripper. It's not a peeler, it is a stripper. Uh, and it is a no peel technique. This is in your wife's sewing kit. If you see this, when you want to cut thread, right? It has a blunt tip, this is blunt, and this is a sharp angle. So your th this goes into your thread and it cuts here. So this is an unpicker, and we got the idea to develop one side of that instrument to go around to cut the decimase. 
So that's the instrument. It's like a Y hook. This digs into the decimates. These two tips are blunt. This is sharp. What about the other end? Now, all of you do dalk, and if you use the marginal dissector that we use, it's a blunt, it's shaped like a knuckle. You can see this is the dalk cannula. We've got something very similar at the other end. We just reverse it. Very simple. This is a lamella separator, a decime separator. So we now have an instrument with one end is here, the other end is there. So we first use the uh, hooked end to go around, cut around, and then we reverse the instrument and we do lamella dissection, no peeling. So let's just see the uh, video. So this is an easy strip. This is an older donor, maybe 60 years old. You can see that my hook has gone in and what is happening, I'm leaving the instrument there, I'm just turning the cornea around and it's cutting all the way around. You get less radio tears. Now you can still get some tears, but generally, quite often it does this and you see how nice it is afterwards. So you go all the way around. Once you reach the other end, See, I'm just pulling the donor around and it's cutting at the, y sh at the Y angle. Can you see that? Very little radio tears. There's one tear there, that's the only tear. So I'm just gonna move that tear away. You wanna round that edge off and you can see how nice the edge is. See that? And this is the lamella dissection. and I'm just lifting, okay? No peeling. When you get to an area which is quite sticky, you just be a little bit slower and you can peel. You can do the entire dissection like this. Just go all the way around, gentle lifting, separation. Now this is under low fluid. It means there is still, still some fluid, but not a lot. If there's a lot of fluid, it will tend to curl. Okay, then I'm using my, most of my DMX are now eight millimeters. So a gentle punch. So I stripped most of it, but I've left the inside, the last bit unstripped. Peel that away. And you can see that's the last bit I'm gonna do. And that's it, okay? So I do the whole thing without peeling. Here's a 36 year old donor. And 36 is sticky. But even then, you're gonna see the same thing. Now the periphery is always a bit looser than the center, so it gets a bit more sticky towards the center. Just go around. You, said, uh, you see a bit more resistance now, but just take your time, a little bit slower now, you can still dissect. Even if you tear, you have still control. You can just round it off like a buttonhole and do somewhere else, okay? So I've torn it once or twice. We've now done 44 cases consecutively, we've not lost any tissue. So no tissue loss. Okay, here is a bit more sticky. Just take your time, a little bit more time than peeling. Peeling is very fast. This is a bit more cautious, a bit safer. Any questions on this while we're showing this? So after this, I'm gonna show you the other techniques. How much of the center part that you Okay, how much the center do I leave? It depends, this one's very sticky, so I'm taking my time. Normally just a little bit, okay, because I don't want it to float off, okay? That's right, yeah, yeah. So there it is, right up, anyway, it goes right to the end. There it is, okay? Completely free. This is a vision blue. You can use vision blue, or you can use um, membrane blue. Membrane blue is what the retina people use for vitrectomy, for membranes. That one is a deeper stain, okay? Yeah. Yes, yes, so what you're describing is injecting saline or air to blow up the decimase. That was the original technique suggested. Uh, Agawao does that, Moraine does that. You can, but the problem is, as you know, when you inject, air or BSS to separate decimates like a big bubble, it only goes up to about eight at the very most. So your donor is very small. You cannot go beyond eight. You can do that, but sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. 
Uh, we prefer to do, this is more control, I think. Okay, so the advantage of our stripping technique, firstly, that hook, you just carousel around, you get less of these uh, torn edges, but most important is that lamella dissection. You're no longer peeling, and you can be formed in young donors. I don't care whether they're young or diabetic. I can peel everything. I can I can peel everything. Okay, I can strip everything, not peel. And we're now looking at the cell loss studies. So we've done 44 cases so far. Okay, so that's peeling, but you know that's not too difficult. I think it's the surgery, how you put that donor in, and how you unfold it, which is the problem. Okay. So why is DSEC and DMEX so different? And why are the results so different? Because you're comparing different stages of evolution. Apples with oranges, okay? DSEC is mature procedure. We've been doing it for 10 years over, 10, 15 years now, okay? Different improvements in technique. There are lots of inserters now. You have better results. The graft failure has gone down. Dislocation has gone down. The cell loss rate is getting better, okay? It's evolved. DMEC has not evolved. It's still at its first stage. It's still a tube you inject, whether it's glass or plastic, it's still scrolled up and you still have to use a BSS cannula and you tap, 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 okay? So it's like the original taco folding stage. It has not evolved. So that's why we need to change it. So how do we make it easier? How do we make DMEC less challenging, more consistent to perform? Well, you seek alternative surgical techniques to handle and control the donor. Do a different surgical technique. And maybe some more devices. I've just shown you for DMEX stripping, you have that device, it makes it a lot more controllable. Now, we have adopted DSEC as our method of performing DMEC. All right? So in DSEC, when we use the endoglide, a major advantage of this technique is enhanced donor control because it is the pull-through technique. You're actually holding the donor and pulling it in. And here, uh, Asiko has their uh, DSEC forceps, which also acts as a smile forceps. If you do smile, you use it to take out the lenticule. This holds onto the donor and it is very good control. Okay? So, one level of control. Also, the AC is controlled because the endoglide, the chamber, is, is, uh, is controlled. For DMEC, you can perform DMEC like this. If you pull the donor in, if you can see here, I'm not pulling the whole donor in, I'm just pulling the decimase in, and I'm holding on to decimase. You have the same level of control, all right? Which means also that it cannot evert. It is always the right way up. So you don't have to put an S stamp or an F stamp or, or you don't have to mark or you don't have to have a slit beam. Why is it so difficult to handle DMEC? tissue, there are three major challenges. If you touch it, you kill the endothelium, so you can't actually physically handle it. It always scrolls endothelium out, so you've got to unscroll it in the AC without touching it. And it wrinkles up as well. So why is it so difficult to handle compared to DSEC? Well, it's obvious, right? There's no stroma. It's just pure decimase, which wrinkles up like tissue paper. So why don't we put back the stroma? If you support the stroma to support it, you prevent it from scrolling inside out, you prevent it from wrinkling, you prevent it, you can hold the stroma now. So when we first thought of this, we designed the decimase mat. This is the stroma. We put the stroma back. We put the, it's a carrier. It's almost like a bandage contact lens, but tougher material. And we put the donor on, and now we have shape. We have form, it won't wrinkle. It adheres, you can hold it, you can wrinkle it, you can coil it, you can do what you like. So we started off a few years ago with this, and this is the mat, the acidesimase, and we put it in the endoglide, just like normal DSEC, and you can see we can coil it the right way up. Endothelium is inside, and here, the mat's left behind in the chamber, we're just pulling the decimase in. The mat is still in the endoglide. See that? Control. That's it. That's the procedure. Okay, so we did some of this, and I did about 30 patients, mostly Fuchs, mostly with, combined with FACO, FACO, uh, FACO and IOL. I had one graft failure, three rebubblings in the first 15 cases, 
first 10 cases, so none in the last 20, and we got reasonable vision, no rejection, but this is my learning curve. The first 15 cases, 60% cell loss, which is unacceptable. I got better. The next 15, we went down to about 42%. It's okay, but not that great, right? Endoglide, DSEC for us, it's about 15 to 20%. So it's still double the cell loss. So they were okay, but not great. Then we thought, and there were problems with the mat as well, pattern issues. So you've got to buy an instrument, you've got to have these mats made. Then we thought, let's make it even easier. We don't need a mat. We still have the stroma, the patient stroma, which we throw away, right? Unless you're using it for doubt. So let's just use, use the stroma as a carrier back again. It's all the way back to the original DSEC procedure. And so this is my latest DMEC technique. I call it hybrid DMEC. I don't know what else to call it because it's DMEC, but it's a hybrid technique using DSEC. Using a standard DSEC surgical technique, it shortens the learning curve. If you're used to doing DSEC, in this case with the endoglide, it's a bit easier to learn how to do DMEC. Important, you, this technique prevents the DMEC donor from scrolling, and therefore you do not need to unscroll. It reduces AC manipulation time. Potentially, we hope to have less endothelial cell loss. We don't need a mat anymore. We just need the stroma. So what do we do? We use the standard endoglide dissect technique, which I've shown you. The only difference is that I pre-strip the decimase first. Okay? So your tissue now is pre-cut tissue. So it's a dissect tissue which has been pre-cut 100 microns, 120, doesn't matter. The only difference is I use the DMEX stripper and separate the decimase. So now your donor has got three layers. It's got your anterior cap, which you throw away. It's got your posterior stroma, which you're going to use as a carrier. And then it's got your final DMEX donor tissue, decimase. Three in one. Same pull-through technique as the mat, but you just pull the decimase in. Okay, so here, your DMEC stroma becomes the carrier, and you leave it behind. What are the advantages? You're still holding on to the donor. There's no chance of donor eversion. You do not need to have a slit beam or intraoperative OCT. You don't need to put a S stamp. You get better control with the endoglide because your chamber is intact, and it should lead to less cell loss. So let's have a look. Okay, so I'm just showing that this is pre-cut, yeah? You can see the cap. Okay, I do the same stripping technique. I'm gonna skip because you've seen this already. This is the same as what you saw earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. Okay, this is just the anterior cap. So now you have three layers, okay? I'm gonna remove that anterior cap ring. That was the anterior cap, right? And you can see it's separated, but I lay it flat. Don't let it coil. I finish off the last bit. Put a bit of BSS just to straighten it there. You have to be very careful here. Don't put too much fluid in, because it can float around. Okay, so this is my FACO. You can see this is quite hazy. I'm gonna skip first. Okay, lens goes in. I do an eight mm stripping. Lens is in, the pupil's still dilated. This is under helon. PI. This is, you can use the same DSEC forceps, or we are now making a uh, iris iridotomy forceps for the PI. I always do a PI. Every case of DMEC, anybody does, you've got to do a PI. Okay, here we are. Three layers going in now. Into the endoglide. I remove the anterior cap. This looks just like DSEC except that the decimase is loose. Just be a bit careful. 
that's the anterior cap. You've still got your posterior stroma there. That's your carrier. You're going to use this to coil the, the endoglide. You need this stroma, otherwise it will just wrinkle up. Okay? And you can see that I'm wicking it in. This is the standard endoglide. Now, I, I put viscoelastic. I actually stopped because sometimes viscoelastic prevents the uh, decimates from opening up. In this video, I put viscoelastic. And then when you grip to coil it in with the forceps, you're going to hold both the decimase and the stroma just to make sure. So this is the only time you're holding on to the tissue. And you can see and you can help to make sure it coils the right way. Just be a little bit careful. Take your time. There. Okay, endothelium is in. So this looks exactly like the sec. Okay, you let go. We're almost running out of time. Is it okay to carry on a few more minutes? Okay. Okay, there it is. Now, same wound. This is a 4.5 millimeter sclerotunnel wound. The one I use for DSEC, standard. You can see the AC maintainer. These are all Asian eyes. I think you do need an AC maintainer. AC maintainer has gone very low flow. Okay, at this point, this is where you're going to go in and just reach in to pull the decimase. So it can be a little bit tricky initially to find out the decimase, where it is. You can pull the stroma in a little bit first, and then you can see. But you want to leave the stroma behind. This is your DSEC, uh, DSEC forceps. And you can have a few attempts. If it's hidden, you... Okay, I pull it out. That's the stroma. Now I reach below. And you, you have a few goals, but you should be able to eventually get the decimase. There it is. Slight wiggle to loosen it. There it is. Slow, really slow. Take your time. AC maintainer is really off or very shallow here. Okay, now my wound is a bit tight in this video. Remove the endoglide chamber and the stroma goes out with it. Okay. There it is. There. See, this is real, not edited. This is how it is. You have to go this slow because you don't want to tear the decimase. It's the right way up. Now you can do a bit of tapping, okay? Or you can put an air bubble in. Just wait. I'm holding on. It's the right way up. And I'm putting a bit of air now. There. That's about it. Okay, then you can move it across whatever you want. Okay? Essentially, that's it. That's the amount of manipulation. So it folded, unfolded correctly. Everything looks fine. You can move it to one side if you want, but you're done, just about. Then you close the eye and do a full air fill, etc. Okay? Just go to the end there. Okay? Full air fill. Okay? That's what it looks like on day one. You know you're, you've done well when it's this clear. Okay? This patient ends up at one month with 20-20, 15% cell loss. You can tell because it's almost no manipulation. All right? That's the cell count there. We've done another 13 cases. Okay. Here's a more difficult. You know, people show nice videos. You should show difficult ones as well. It's, all, it's not so simple. Here, everything looks fine. I'm just going to skip this through here. All this is the same. No difference. Here we go. In. Everything looks the same as just now. Same thing. You gotta go in and reach in. There it is. Nice and loose, this one. Okay, pull it almost all the way out. And then you pull out the... Now, I'm afraid of losing the chamber here. You see that the cornea will buckle, so I really have a very flat chamber. So I've told my assistant to just increase the AC maintainer just a little bit. And this is what happens. Okay, you can see it's buckling. So I said, okay, 
I told my nurse, increase the AC a bit. See, it's very, it's flat. And she increases the AC maintainer. Oh. Disaster, right? You don't know where it is. Don't worry. Just be patient. Don't, you can move around, but it's still holding it the right way. You just tap. Even now, I don't know which way is up. But because you're holding on, it cannot be upside down. You will tell. So this is also unedited. Okay, just keep going. Just tap away, whatever you weigh, you want. And even though it hasn't, I can't quite figure it out there. Okay, it's because you're holding on. Okay, so even though it's all scrunched up in one corner, because you're holding on, you can rescue these cases. And here we're using the air bubble just to open it up. Quick tip, this air bubble is too small yet for me to let go because it hasn't unfolded. A slightly larger air bubble. So it will unfold. Okay, so that's it. Full air fill. There. Okay, so you've seen this. Yeah, high femur, yeah. It's okay, I did a full end tamponade, the blood is below. Okay, be careful of high femur. That's another story, okay? Be careful of fibrin, be careful of high femur. So, my DMAC, I started off with the DMAT, the mat. I did the first 15 cases, not very good results. 59% cell loss, one primary failure, three rib bubblings. My next 15 cases, I got better. 40% cell loss, no failures, no rebubbling. And now, you've done 14 cases now with the, out the mat, this is the hybrid DMAC procedure. We're down to 28% cell loss on average. So we have some which are 15%, some which are 35, 40%. Okay, but overall so far, it's about 28% cell loss, no primary failure, no rebubbling. Now, these are still small numbers and we're still learning. I'm still learning the technique. But I actually think that we've been able to reduce the cell loss rates. And now we have a procedure which is a little bit more reproducible. So in summary then, DMAC is the new EK. Very sexy. We all want to do it. Okay, but it's very difficult still. It needs to evolve. It needs to change. One way is to make DMAC more like DSEC. So we've already mastered some of those skills. And my technique uses what I'm used to, which is my inserter. You can probably do this technique maybe with the uh, Busin or with the endocert, I'm not sure. But the same principle of holding onto the donor. I just use the endoglide, it gives me more control. And use your posterior stroma lenticule to control prevented scrolling. My early results seem pretty good, so my suggestion is please don't scroll. Okay, thank you. That's my, all my colleagues. And invite you to Seoul, Korea for the Asia Corner Society meeting in December and World Corner Congress, first time outside the US, it will be in Singapore in 2020. Thanks, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, when I pull it in. Yes. Still holding on. Yeah. you want to attach it to the stroma, Yeah. still the endothelium is facing the endothelium. No, 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 no. The endoglide, what happens is when we load it, endothelium is up. When we take it out, we have to turn it the other way around. So when we insert it, it's in the anatomical, so the coil is like this. Yeah? So when you pull it in, it opens up like that, endothelium down. So what you don't see is that once you load it, you load it upside down, endothelium up. Once you take it out, you have to turn it the right way and then insert it. Very critical. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much.